Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are in the world tuning in. Uh, my name is Lauren Walker, and I'm the creator of Energy Medicine Yoga, and I'm so excited to be with you this morning. Um, I'm going to share some practices to cultivate joy, and I'm going to do a little reading out of my new book, The Energy to Heal, which Llewellyn just published. It's just um, uh, over, about a month old, five weeks old. And um, so if you like what we're doing today, you might want to grab a copy of it so that you can find lasting freedom from your stress and trauma with energy medicine yoga. That's the promise of the book. And how do we do that? One of the ways is to cultivate joy. Uh, when you go into a trauma or a stress response, your body gets flooded with chemicals that allow you to, in the moment, overcome obstacles that fight or flight or flee that flood of adrenaline that fills you so that you can do something like lift a bus off of a, a person underneath right that kind of thing and then after we need to release those stress chemicals from the body and we don't often do that and one of the ways to increase the ability to heal is to bring joy into your life so that you increase the feel-good hormones that build your body up, that help you to heal. And so we're going to work on that a little bit today. So I want to start by doing a little technique called the wake up, the energy medicine yoga wake up. And you'll find uh, instructions on how to do that in this book, as well as my other two books, if you've gotten those. Um, it, because it is the baseline of getting your energies organized and moving in the right direction. So uh, really, really important flows of energy. And so really easy to access. We're going to do that, especially if it's early morning where you are. You might have just woken up. I'm uh, sort of still in my pajamas a little bit. I got my hot drink. I've got my hot cacao. Um, anybody get their wordle yesterday? That was a tough one. Even though I drink cacao a lot, it was a tough one. I hope you got your wordle yesterday. Okay, so let's begin with the wake up. Feel yourself getting grounded wherever you are. You might still be curled up in bed and that's fine. If you're seated in a chair or you're standing, feel yourself connected to the surface that you're on. And let's just take a deep breath together in the nose and out the mouth. One more. Now find your collarbones and drop right underneath your collarbones and you'll have these kind of hollows there. And I want you to press in and massage those and then start to thump. Now for some of you that are uh, in the western, western part of the United States or continuing west over there into the ocean and the countries beyond that, it's going to be really early in the morning. And so these points might feel really sore because you might still be tired. Your energies might be moving backwards. Keep breathing in the nose and out the mouth. And if you're on the other side, if you're east, if you're on the east coast or you're beyond that, you're maybe over in Europe and beyond, then you're later in your day, but you still might be kind of tired. You might be reaching for that cup of coffee. Instead, I'll ask you to tap these points. Keep breathing even while I'm talking in the nose and out the mouth and then move your tap right to the center of the chest right there over the sternum. And that's a point that helps your immune system. And if we need immune strengthening right now, boy, this is the point for you. Tap, tap, tap. Nice deep breathing in the nose and out the mouth. Okay, now you're going to go to the side seam of your body right underneath the breasts, right on the side seam, and you're going to tap on that point there. Nice, firm tapping. And this point helps you to um, metabolize or digest everything. So not just the food and drinks that you take into your body, but all the information. So if you are been in Llewellyn Con and listening to these incredible presentations, there's a lot of information to take in. And this point actually will help you to digest that and let your body figure out how to use this information. 
Shake your hands off, take another deep breath in the nose and out the mouth. And we're gonna do another tap. If you've got glasses, maybe push them up on your forehead and you're gonna tap right there on your cheekbones. And really tune into your feet if your feet are on the floor right now, because what this point does is it helps to ground your energy, literally bringing it right down the body and out the bottoms of your feet. One more breath in the nose and out the mouth. Good. Shake your hands off. Close your eyes if that feels comfortable for you. Turn your attention inward and we're just going to come into a moment of silence. Just letting the body listen to itself. Keep breathing in the nose. And out the mouth. Slowly open the eyes again. And let's take one arm and I want you to slide your hand up that arm. And then you, when you get to your shoulder, give it a nice strong squeeze and then slice through your body to the opposite hip. Slide up your arm, squeeze the top of that shoulder and slice through your body to the opposite hip. Do that a few more times. Slide, squeeze and slice slide, squeeze, and slice. One more each side. This actually is a little bit of a derivation off of the traditional wake up. But since we're here on this special programming today, I want to give you guys a few special extra tools. Okay, great. Shake that off. Now bring your hands together in front of the low body. So right, um, I'm kind of having my hands right in my lap right now and slightly off the body, a couple inches in front of the body. And set an intention for yourself. Maybe something that you want to learn today or a feeling that you want to have. When you feel grounded in that intention, inhale in the nose and draw the hands all the way up the body overhead and exhale, hands wide around you. Two more times. Inhale in the nose, exhale out the mouth. One more. Beautiful. Now bring one finger into the belly button and one finger between the eyebrows in the third eye. Press in and pull slightly up. Three breaths again in the nose and out the mouth. Beautiful. Release. Shake your hands off. Okay. Um, I hope that you're feeling a little bit better now, a little more grounded, maybe a little more awake. That's a practice that you want to learn and start to use every day, every day. And you will notice changes in your life and in all areas of your life if you make a commitment to doing that wake up practice. So if you want to learn it again, watch this video. I've got lots of videos all over. You can Google and find them all over and join my website, energymedicineyoga.net to learn more um, because you're going to want to learn and practice these techniques and cultivate a practice with these techniques because energy follows patterns and those patterns become habituated in the body. And so if you're sick or struggling, oftentimes our energies are fixed in those patterns of struggle. And so in order for us to heal and get better and move on and come into joy and thrive in our lives, we need to come out of those held stuck patterns that aren't serving us. So the way to begin to do that is by breathing and by doing the wake up. So those are the first two things that you're going to learn to do to heal in my book, The Energy to Heal. And really in any practice that you're undertaking, you really, really, really need to work with your energy. Okay, so here's what I want to do as we're cultivating joy today. If you've got a journal or a piece of paper, grab it. If you don't have a journal or a piece of paper, go grab one right now. We'll wait for a moment while you go and grab your journal or your piece of paper and a pen. Here's my journal. Here's my pen. And we're going to start doing some doodling. 
Any of you who know me know that I'm a big doodler. If you've read my second book, The Energy Medicine Yoga Prescription, there's a whole prescription on doodling. And we're going to do a little doodling today because doodling helps to activate joy circuits in the body. So there's all kinds of, and maybe a lot of you doodle. When we used to have landlines that were connected to the wall, you just sort of sit there and doodle as you were talking on the phone because you were kind of stuck in one position. So I want you to start to doodle. And there's all kinds of things. You can doodle geometric shapes. There's a star, there's a diamond. I'm always doodling these sort of internal twirls or then I'll connect them to each other. So I want you to pick some thoughts of some things to doodle. I was gonna run you through an exercise to learn how to doodle my dog. Louie, can you look up at the camera? You can see his little fuzzy head right there. He's back in the Papadom chair. But I like to doodle Louie. I'll draw a little dot for his nose and then I'll draw doodle some hair and then I'll doodle two little eyes and then the little hair that comes out. I'm not much of an artist, but that's a pretty good representation of Louie. Okay, you guys are going to doodle. And I'm going to do a little reading while you doodle. So here's how it's going to go. While I'm reading, if any words pop out into your mind, I want you to write those down in your doodle or on the piece of paper because this is important information that's coming through. And oftentimes when we are doing something that's more left brain, more... Um, creative, more uh, tapped into the unconscious mind, then we have access to some of these things. I said left brain, but I think it's actually right brain because the left brain ru runs the right side of the body, which is more um, when you're doing math equations. So you could doodle math equations if you like, and I'm going to read to you. And when I ask you a question, I want you to write down the answer on your page. Okay. <clears throat> One of the pieces of moving forward in your life is finding something you love to do, something you're passionate about or deeply interested in. It could be some part of a childhood dream you had, something you've always wanted to do but never had the chance or the time for, or it could be something totally new that you've never even thought about. If you're not sure what your childhood dreams were or if you don't know what you feel passionate about, Spend some time journaling. Write down all the things you like to do, even if they seem silly. So what is it that brings you joy? If a, if a word jumps into your head, write it down. Take out your journal and write. Don't edit yourself, just write. Write down all the things you used to like to do when you were a kid, when you weren't doing things for a reason or an outcome, but simply because you enjoyed them. And then I go on and give you some um, ways to figure out if you don't know what it is that you like to do. And one of the things that I uh, that is not in the book, again, a little extra here, is um, it, was there anyone in your childhood that you were in awe of, that you just held up on a pedestal, whether they were an, another child or an adult? What did they do? I remember I was in awe of my friend Allison, and she was a gymnast. And I always just remember, wow, what she did was so amazing. I would write down gymnastics, right? So something like that, okay? Keeping writing, I'm going to read you a little bit more here. Doing something for play is just as important as doing anything. Being playful, silly, and childlike can help you clear away the idea that life is difficult and serious, traumatic and stressful. Playing also sparks the energies of healing and joy in our bodies. They're called radiant circuits, and we're going to activate one in just a moment. It is actually one of the most important things to do. In our culture, we don't put enough importance on this incredibly important activity. Finding something you love to do can protect you from feelings of despair, disillusionment, or hopelessness with the difficulties of life. Finding joy can help you release the residues of trauma and stress. One of the things I like to do is doodle. I feel silly admitting this. Doodling doesn't seem like much of an activity, unlike its more serious cousins painting and drawing. And yet, I find myself doing it all the time. 
I doodle with both hands, loving to see what my non-dominant hand creates. I doodle sacred geometric shapes and, of course, the five-pointed star. When I'm in times of struggle or crisis, I can turn my thinking mind off and go into this space of pure childlike wonder. I also like to swim. I like batting a tennis ball around and I like picking huckleberries. None of these things has any value other than that they are fun. That's it, fun. Except I've got to editorialize on my own writing right now. Huckleberries, picking huckleberries has a purpose. You can feed yourself, so there. Like so many people, I often feel despair and sadness tired of seeing the pain and suffering in the world. It is at times like these when reverting to my childlike mind is the most helpful antidote. Sitting with a cup of hot chocolate, cacao, is the most, excuse me, sitting with a cup of hot chocolate and a doodling pad brings me a kind of quiet peace that fills my soul again. Finding joy in the small things is what makes life wonderful. That's from my new book, the energy to heal that you can get from Llewellyn. Okay, so you've all been doodling. So what I'd like you to do now is drop in the chat something that brings you joy. What it came up for you when I was reading? What did you jot down in your journal when I was reading? What did you love to do as a child that maybe you've dropped off and you aren't doing anymore? What brings you joy? What sparks joy? Drop that into the chat. It's going to be for a couple of reasons. One, we all get to know what brings you joy, and that's a beautiful thing. And two, we can spark each other. So if somebody's feeling really low and they're like, I'm not sure what brings me joy anymore, and then you start to read in the chats, I've started coloring. Coloring is a great way of sparking joy. Being in nature, swimming, foraging. Oh, I love all of those things. Keep dropping them in. Drop them into the chat so that we can support each other in bringing out the joy. Okay, while you guys are doing that, we're going to activate a radiant circuit. Beach combing, tap dancing. Whoa, that's fun. Gosh, I haven't done tap dancing forever since I was a kid. That is joyful. Walking barefoot in the cool grass. Oh, I find that I'm always looking for joy. Laying outside in the grass and listening to the bees, making fresh bread and uh, with my grandma. Oh, that's beautiful. Being in nature, walking in the woods, swimming, singing, horse riding. Oh, this is beautiful. Playing with my dog, drawing, listening to music, growing my own lettuce. Wow, that is amazing, isn't it? You grow something and you eat it. It's like nothing you've ever experienced before. This is joyful. Okay, so we're going to do a radiant circuit. These are the energies of joy. You actually have a whole system of energy in your body that is for joy and healing. You have nine energy systems of the body, and I'm going to teach you all of that um, when you buy the book. It's right in there. And if you take a live class with me, which I hope you do, I'm teaching a class bringing the energy to heal to life. It starts in October. And so if you want to join that class, um, jump on my mailing list so that you can hear about how to join. So go to the website, energymedicineyoga.net. Planting flowers, playing in the garden with mom, running, crochet, painting. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay. Here we're going to do a radiant circuit, activating these energies of joy that live in your body and are just waiting for you. Okay. So I'm taking my glasses off. So um, here's what you're going to do. Rub your hands together and shake them off. And then bring your hands to that third eye point right between the eyebrows. And I just want you to draw a heart around your face. So you're going to go up to the hairline, around, and down to the point of the heart at the chin. And we're going to do that two more times. Right up through the face, draw a heart. Right up through the face, draw a heart. Now bring the hands right to the center of the sternum again, that same point. And now we're going to draw a heart around the body, down to the base of the body. Up again, around the body. There's the third heart. And now we're going to draw a heart around the whole body. So your arms are going to come up overhead and you're going to draw that heart shape around you. Sweep up again. Draw a big heart around your whole body. One more time. This is called the nine hearts. And then I like to add the tenth heart. Make a heart with your hands and bring it over the heart center. Bow your head for a moment and allow yourself 
to feel a moment of gratitude. Okay, beautiful. Lift your head and come back together. If you're not feeling joyful, you can trace that pattern and you can activate these joyful energies. Little things like this, energy medicine and energy medicine yoga are simple ways to activate healing pathways for your body. Healing trauma, healing stress, coming into joy are actually beautiful practices. They're not painful at all. I invite you in to learn more so that you can be free as well. Okay. I have this other um, uh, practice that I want to do with you. And I thought that we were going to be in like a Zoom room where you could see yourself. So what I'm going to ask you to do is um, you can do it. You can visualize it and imagine it. I imagine some of you probably have your cell phone sitting next to you, even though you're on the computer. Or if you're on your cell phone, I'm not sure you'll be able to do this. So you can do it either way. If your cell phone is off, and you look at it, you can still see yourself, right? Like I can see myself reflected here. You also could go ahead and um, put the camera on so that you can see yourself in the camera. If you have a little compact mirror, you can also do it this way because if you haven't probably figured it out, what I want you to do is look at yourself. I want you to look at yourself, okay? And you're gonna bring one hand right over the high heart chakra. So. You're just right in this area that we were thumping earlier. You're just going to rest one hand there. And what I want you to do is look at yourself. So I'm going to do this too. So I'm going to look away from you now. I'm going to look at myself. And just take yourself in. Look at yourself. And maybe smile at yourself. And feel gratitude for yourself that you showed up this morning. Remember that you deserve love, deserve joy, deserve healing. You don't have to do anything special to get that. If you've been hard on yourself today or over this past week, maybe just say, sorry, sorry, self. I didn't mean to do that. I really love you. Life is challenging sometimes, but I'm here with you. This is you speaking to yourself. You are here with you. Stay with yourself. Just give yourself a smile. Beautiful to see you today. Your radiant, shining magnificence. And if any of that, if any of this, speaking to yourself in kindness, smiling at yourself in joy, if any of that brings up any resistance or critical voices, what I want you to do is just smooth your hands behind your ears, just like you're smoothing your hair back. I'm gonna take those glasses off again. And come back again to, oh, it's so good to see you today. Thank you for being you. Gosh, I know it was a really tough week, but we made it through. We're going to celebrate today. We're going to celebrate having breath in the body and being all together. Let's take another deep breath. Inhale in the nose and out the mouth. Now bring your hands to cup over your eyes. So the heels of the hands are on the cheekbones, palms over the eye sockets, and the fingers over the forehead. And take another moment, just breathing here, in the nose, out the mouth. And cultivate that feeling of gratitude again. Think of one thing in this moment that you're grateful for. And then let that feeling flood through your whole body. And then thank whoever it is you thank for the blessings in your life. You're just going to spin your hands, pivot them so the fingertips are at the center of the forehead now, and you're going to press in and pull apart to the temples. And then smooth behind those ears again, down. Squeeze those same points at the top of the shoulders. And now slide your hands down to rest over the center in the heart center, right over the center of the chest. Take another deep breath together in the nose. And out the mouth. Good, release your hands, shake them off. Okay, 
Looks like we have like one or two or three minutes left. And um, so I would love if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat. If you want to drop in anything else that you're joyful for or that you have gratitude for, you can drop that in the chat. This is hard. Yeah, it is. Sometimes it's so hard to love the self. Let me tell you this. Loving the self is one of the crucial elements for healing. And I have a whole section in the book on how and practices that you can do to come back to love for yourself. If you've suffered any kind of trauma or you're under stress, one of the first things to go is that love for the self. And so it's really, really important to cultivate that again. So, um, so please check those practices out and do that. And just what we did today, that looking yourself in the mirror and smoothing behind the ears. I wanna say too, um, that course that I'm offering in the fall, um, on the energy to heal. It's through the shift network and they have an incredibly generous um, scholarship program. So if you're thinking, oh, I can't afford a class with Lauren. I know that they're really expensive. Put that thought out of your mind. Do your radiant circuit hearts. Hold your head, hold your heart and sign up for the course. There's tons of scholarships. Doesn't matter what your financial situation is. Come and join me. If you want to get the book today, I know Llewellyn is offering 30% off. I know that you have all spent a lot of money on your health and your healing and your wellness. I guarantee that the purchase of this book is going to be well spent for you to heal. I wrote this book for you, born out of the pain and struggling that I went through. And now on the other side, I can see the gifts. And I promise you it is possible to overcome and really be free of the pain and the struggling that you're in right now. And joy is one of the ways to do it. Happy Juneteenth. Yes, happy, happy Juneteenth to all of our brothers and sisters all over the world. Let us bring joy. Oh, thank you for saying that. Because here's one last thing I'm going to leave you with. As I was thinking yesterday, what I wanted to present to you today, I shared to my husband, I said, I'm doing a class on joy. I'm not exactly sure what I should do. And he said, what about this? And he pulled up, there was a magazine just splayed out on the couch that had been there for a while and nobody had looked at it and he picked it up. And there it was open to a page that had a picture of this absolutely beautiful singer. Her name is Joy Oladokun, Oladokun, Joy Oladokun. And go and plug her name in and listen to the, her song, Look Up. And if you just write joy, look up, her song will come. So it was such a remarkable thing. I said to my husband, how do I bring in joy? And he said, what about this joy? And there it was, Joy Aladakun and her song, Look Up, is a joyful, joyful song. So I want to leave you with that. A few practices to cultivate joy and Go listen to some joy. Have a beautiful Father's Day. Have a beautiful celebration of Juneteenth. And have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yes, we get to cry together instead of alone. That is a gift. That is a gift. So many beautiful gifts of being together, celebrating our successes and being together in our struggles. That is a huge part of healing. I hope I see you again soon. Find me. Come and find me. I'm on all the social media outlets and I'm at energymedicineyoga.net and I really can't wait to see you and do some more of these beautiful practices together. Have a beautiful